What is going down, y'all? Welcome back to the most underrated sneaker channel on YouTube. Your words, not mine. Today, man, today the homie Dow Palantonio is back, man, with another sneaker review. A pair that he has copped. A pair that some of you fools are probably arguing with him about on Twitter today. He was just filling me in on uh, some of the nonsense. What what were you? Uh, what was going on on Twitter today? Yeah, uh, parlay branding or not? Do they have oh, that's on the, the insult? Question. Yeah, I mean, just anywhere. That's the question. We'll get to that in a minute. First of all, I want to cover a couple of different things, man. Number one, we are going to be dropping the podcast. That'll be coming a week from this Monday. You can expect the podcast two times a week. So we'll be dropping it, uh, what, Tuesdays and Fridays, I think? Good Tuesdays that. and Fridays, tentatively. Now, what can they expect on the podcast? I've been getting a lot of people asking, what are you guys going to talk about on there? It's going to be sneaker related. It's going to be some pop culture. It's going to be sports. Uh, definitely football heavy, fantasy football heavy, fantasy football season's coming. Anything else? What do you think? Hey, that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, I mean, it's football season. I'm amped. You sound really amped, Dallas. <laughs> Doesn't he sound damned, folks? Actually, now that I think about it, before we jump in the sneaker review, uh, I wanted to talk really quickly about the Marquette King situation, man. This made national news. I did not think it was going to go that far, but it did end up making national news. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Marquette King, punter for the Denver Broncos, who we got from the Oakland Raiders. Raider fans, I get it. You're laughing. You're saying, ha ha. I get it. Joke's on us. Anyway, this man is arguably the best punter in the NFL, one of the best punters in the NFL. He comes to Denver. He does a terrible interview last week. Did you hear the interview? Uh, yeah, some of it. Snippets. All right, I'm going to play the interview. It's a minute and 30 seconds. It is the worst interview of all time. The homie Zach By and Brandon Stokely, 104.3 The Fan here in Denver, the uh, dream job that I was trying out for a few months back or a month back, whatever it was. They tried to interview Marquette King. They just asked him, hey, Marquette, can we have a few minutes of your time? You want to do an interview? He said yes. Okay, they didn't force him to do the interview. It wasn't a media obligation by the Broncos PR staff. It was, would you like to talk? Do you want to do the interview? He said yes, and this is the interview you got from him. It's Stokely and Zach sitting down with Marquette King. Now that six days of training camp are in your back pocket, uh, how would you summarize it for yourself personally? Mm, I don't know. I don't even know how to summarize it. Good? It's like a regular practice day. <laughs> what's, what's, how's, the, how's the transition been from you? You know, new team, uh, new locker room, obviously, uh, you know, moving from Oakland to, to Denver. How, how has that transition been for you? Mm, I don't know. I just good. It's cool. We got some cool people on the team. Nice. Uh, 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 how is your uh, relationship so far with the coaching staff? It's a brand new coaching staff as well. Are you getting along well? Yeah. Everything's going good. You got you, you you always got a lot of personality, but it doesn't seem you you have a lot to say right now. You you frustrated about something in particular or something? I just don't like talking about football. Really. I just do it. Well, tell us about yourself. Who who is Marquette King? What what do you I like, like to how do? he tried to steer enjoying? it there. Mm -hmm. I know I like more oxygen. <laughs> yeah, Alta too bothered me a little bit. I, I know it takes some time to, to get adjusted. I mean, it's, it's my job, so, yeah. How, how much are you looking forward to games uh, starting here a week from tomorrow, your preseason games, and, and get the uh, you know, opportunity to really Fans? strap up? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's definitely coming, so... <laughs> Right, we'll leave it there. Have a good rest of your day, man. Well, thanks a lot. Appreciate yeah. it, man. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely coming? Well, no shit. <laughs> Jesus. Dude, I'm frustrated listening to the interview. I don't care. Great punter or not. Let me break it down for you. Punting is important to the team, but the average punter from the best to the worst in the league, I think the... It's five to seven yard average difference. So Riley Dixon was our punter last year. Marquette King may have a five yard average better. That's not anything. That's nothing. You're a punter, bro. You're not that special. And the fact that you intentionally go out of your way to not talk to the media after you said you'll talk to the media when it was not an obligation, it wasn't something that was forced on you to do. The fact that you said, I don't like to talk about football. Okay, cool. Brandon Stokely tries to steer the conversation and says, who is Marquette King? Well, what do you like to do, man? What do you like to do for fun? What kind of things do you enjoy? I would enjoy a little more oxygen. Really. 
I mean, it's funny, but at the same time, it's not really that funny. Like, no wonder John Gruden cut your ass. You know what I mean? Like, that's how I feel as a fan and as a, someone listening to that, expecting to hear a cool interview from a player that is charismatic. Last year, remember, he's punting the ball. He's riding the Bronco on the field. He's doing all the bullshit. I'm disappointed. As a fan, I'm disappointed, man. That's how you treat your local media when they just want to ask you some questions about how you're enjoying Denver, how you settling in with camp, how you enjoying your coaches, what do you think of your new teammates? That's how you respond. Oakland fans didn't even like the fool. Oakland had problems with the guy. That's what I'm saying, and I get it. Raiders fans, you guys are laughing at us. Good on you, man. The Raiders, I thought it was stupid. I was like, why did John Gruden cut that guy? He's the best punter in football. I was so pumped when Delway went out and got him. I was excited. Now, don't really care. Not that excited. I'd rather sign somebody off the street and get rid of that guy. I don't want that. That kind of guy here. I don't want that. That's a cancer in the locker room is what that is. As a second year head coach, Vance Joseph has enough issues. We do not need that here in Denver, man. This is the kind of stuff you're going to get on the podcast. Stuff like this, man. Different topics, different things involving sports, fantasy football. We'll get into some NBA sneakers, obviously. It's going to be fun. I'm very, very excited to do the podcast. Overall, you and I have a really, really good dynamic. Anyway, I'm overly annoyed with the Marquette King situation. That made national news though. Oh, that's not even the craziest part. I'm sorry, before we get into the sneaker, I almost forgot the craziest part. I don't even know if you know this. So after Marquette King does that interview, if you want to call it an interview, with Brandon Stokely and Zach By, it gets played later on in the day on a show with Big Al and DMac. That's the show we sat in on when we went in, did the dream job with the vlog, all that stuff. That's how this kind of ties back to the vlog. Big Al and DMac play the interview, and DMac's kind of just saying, if you don't want to talk, just say, nah, I'm not really feeling it today. I don't really want to talk. Then you don't even have to do the interview at all. Why come to the interview and do that? Well, on Saturday, Marquette King sends out a tweet and tells DMac to suck his you-know-what, which is super offensive, right? Then on Sunday, DMac's out at practice, and Marquette King tries to come after him at practice. He tries to come after a journalist, someone that's doing their job, that's just paid to give their opinion on the radio. He tries to come at him at practice, and Broncos PR staff has to uh, separate him and pull him away. He goes out of his way to go over to the media area. It's not like DMAC was out on the field taunting him or anything like that. He goes out of his way to go to the... What kind of person is this? Is this a person that you really want on your team? I'm not a fan of this guy at all. I don't care what he does. I'm not a guy that's like, oh, screw, they could do whatever they want. Domestic violence, sexual assault, shootouts, whatever they want. People could do whatever they want as long as they're good football players. I don't view things like that in sports. I'm sorry, I'm like taking over the show here. The passion is good. Passion the passion is, is good. good. Yeah. Anyway, let's get into some sneakers, man. I'm very disappointed in the, uh, the Marquette King situation, but that's just to catch a lot of people up. I did have people asking me about it over the weekend. Did you guys see this? Did you hear anything about it? Yes, I did. I knew it made ESPN news. I knew about it before it went viral and made ESPN stuff because I follow the radio stations, the sports talk stations here in Denver. Definitely not what I was expecting. I was expecting Friday, the interview to kind of just be the end of it. They would talk about it, go over it on the station, and that would be the end. I didn't expect him to tweet out and then to go approach him at camp. I was not expecting that. Pretty wild, wild stuff. Anyway, man, these sneakers, speaking of controversy, these have been some controversy for you on Twitter, my yeah. man. Yeah. I saw you getting into some arguments with people on Twitter. So we'll get into that in a second. $200 retail, size 10 and a half. These are the homie Dow Palantonios, the Ultra Boost LTD. Now, are these parlays or are these not parlays? I guess that's kind of the debate we're that talking about That is the here. debate, yeah. So, uh, you know, where the controversy comes from is the pictures that leaked directly on Adidas' website actually shows them as parlays. So they have the parlay branding on the insoles. Um, it doesn't show the box, on, obviously, on Adidas' website, but uh, they are not a parlay parlay model. Now, on the tidbits of Adidas' website, on the description, it does, however, say that it does have the, the recycled plastic uh, that is blended into the upper. So is that, that where people are getting confused, or are they getting confused from the picture? They're getting confused from the picture because what I'm saying is they don't have the Parlay branding anywhere, on the box, on the insoles, on the shoes anywhere. So what Adidas' website has is this shoe with the Parlay, traditional Parlay insole. Gotcha. And it's confusing people, and they're like, well, but it's, it shows it here. And then I actually tweeted out what my insoles look like, and they just have the traditional boost word on gotcha. it. Gotcha. So. Well, without further ado, man, let's go ahead and uh, jump right into these bad boys right here. Bang. There we are. The Adidas Ultra Boost LTD. What do you call them? You're not calling them parlay then? No. I just call them the Ultra Boost LTD. Ultra Boost LTD. The white heel cup, man. I love that. Yeah. Love the white heel cup. Really sets it off. There's a good look around the shoe for you. I mean, I guess if you want to get technical, these are called the Cloud White slash Silver Metallic. Yeah. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's what I read. But they're really not parlays, man. They kind of have that parlay uh, aqua color. 
to them, but technically they're not parlays, even though Adidas has them shown as parlays on the website, which is very confusing to mm -hmm. people. But now, now tell me this, did you get these? Obviously you got these early. Mm -hmm. Did these come early from a store that had put them out on the shelf early, or did you got a, you got a hookup? Got the hookup on these. Okay, yeah. okay. Had the plug so, on these. So it's not something that these were just sitting on a shelf and you just went in and were right. able to cop early. Okay, I just want to clear that up. So Dallas was able to get these early. I think these are dropping tomorrow, which might be today when you're watching the vlog. So mm -hmm. these should be out in your local retailers or on Adidas.com or wherever you buy Ultra Boost. Before we jump into the shoe, do you know anything about stock numbers, how limited they are? Obviously they say LTD, but we know that yeah. doesn't mean they're limited. They're more limited than a regular GR, but the LTD really is talking about the qualities, which we can get into here in a second. But you know, here's the deal. People are kind of past boost. So I think they'll sit. I don't think they'll sell out, but LTDs are always more limited. But look what look what the look what the uh, the black LTDs did. The black 3Ms. Look how long those sat, and then they went under the fifth anniversary. Yeah, the fifth yeah, anniversary yeah, yeah. joints. You know. So yeah. all right, jumping into the sneaker, you've got the 4.0 prime knit pattern over here. Some shoes I like it on, some shoes I don't like it on. It's really hit or miss for me. These ones aren't bad. I think it really looks good with everything else being white. I think the white really sets it off. So I don't mind the pattern here on it. 4.0 pattern, not as stretchy as your 3.0. 3. .0, 3 2.0 is probably the most stretchy. This I would compare to more of a 2.0 or 1.0. As far as the stretchiness goes, what do you think of the pattern? Pattern's good. I do have to go up uh, half size, so I have a little room in the toe, but uh, that's that really weird for me. I get the same thing. Some pairs I have to go half up. Yeah. Like the cookies and cream, I should have gone half up. I yeah. didn't, so I still haven't worn that pair. But I didn't go half up on the 4.0 parlay, the blue pair. You didn't? That's sitting downstairs. Didn't go half up and it fits great. Mm. So I don't know how to, I can't call it on yeah. 4.0, honestly. I've had some pairs that uh, are too small at true to size and then some pairs that are fine at true to size. Yeah. So I really don't, I don't know if there is a universal way to go. On these, you said you went up half? I did, I went up a half and I'll tell you, I've got extra toe room, but for me, the width going that half up just makes it more comfy. All right, moving up to the lacing system in the cage. Let's start here. You notice they're doing a lot more with the two-toned on the stripes. Shout out to the homies from Boosted Stripes. They were the first ones really doing that or pioneering that I don't know if this is going to be damaging to their business at all that Adidas is dropping the show your stripes collection or they're starting to do more of this with the stripes how do you think that's going to affect boosted stripes um to me boosted stripes was ahead of the curve they were doing things that uh, we all wanted to really be different and now I think uh, Adidas is playing on boosted stripes so good for them I think that just helps their name yeah but at the same time how are I mean if Adidas just starts putting out pairs like this is that are they still really going to have a viable business or company yeah I mean I think so because Adidas is, uh, boosted stripes can put carbon fiber. They can do all kinds Great of point. different patterns, that kind Great of stuff, point. right? And I don't believe that you know Adidas will. Could plus, they? plus, you, when Adidas comes out with this, that's what it is. Yeah. You don't have the option. Maybe you think something else would look better on here. Right. You don't really have the option to customize that. Adidas is doing it, but they're fixed. Right. Now, there's pros and cons to that. Sure. I mean, they're never going to come off. They're not going to peel off like boosted stripes. Boosted stripes, I banged into the side of a table and rip my stripe. You know what I mean? That's just me being clumsy. It's not their fault. Right. But unfortunately, that's just a side effect of having boosted stripes versus this. You could scratch the paint. You could scrape the paint up just like your heel cup or whatever else. Well, and boosted stripes is also evolving. Have you heard that they're starting to uh, do prototypes for heel cups? Yep. So, I mean, it's it's evolution. And, uh, you know, I think they're ahead of the curve. And I think they'll continually teach Adidas what it, what you know what the boundaries push boundaries moving into the laces here you have your kind of 4.0 uh all the 4.0s have kind of been coming with these laces right yeah same style textured. of laces yeah. you know a lot of the 3.0s came with a textured lace too it is different on the 4.0s um, but they're still all kind of coming with that and then you get the black uh, lace tips on this pair here kind of an interesting touch to go with the black in my opinion with mm -hmm. everything else being white it's just weird that they would go with black, black. there and not white i almost kind of feel like it should be white. I don't know. Yeah, white would white would have been fire. Moving up to the tongue tab, standard Adidas performance logo on the tongue tab. Same on both shoes. Moving down to the heel cup, silvered out Ultra Boost branding on here. It's all silver on the white heel cup. I love that Absolutely part. Absolutely fire. Super clean. Fire. Uh, probably one of my favorite parts of the shoe, if not my favorite part of the shoe. Now moving to the inside, man. The uh, the whole the thing that infamous. sparked all the controversy today. Both of them, just say Boost with the new Boost logo there. So no parlay branding anywhere on the shoe. Just like Dallas said, there's no parlay branding on the inside. Regardless of what you're seeing on adidas.com or any Boost links or any of these other uh, sites on Twitter, it's just Boost on the inside. That's it. It's just Boost. Moving down to the midsole, obviously, 
classic boost there, and then the outsole, all white, continental outsole, continental logo, and then you do have the yellow torsion underneath. I do like that I like too. It. I like that as a uh, yeah. nice little change. The torsion on the inside of the shoe is white, matching the boost. Adidas is finally getting it right. They're pretty much just going to that on all the pairs now. It's not something that we have to hope for anymore. Remember back in the day, they were all just gray. Like every one of them was gray, gray, right. gray, gray. Even now on, they're starting the, to match it. Even on the black shoes, which was yeah, so I know. frustrating. Super Remember annoying, yeah. triple black ultra boost, and they'd have a gray. Gray. torsion on it. it killed me the worst but i'm glad adidas is uh taking my advice on that thank you guys for watching the channel man you guys are <laughs> i love the shit out of y'all for that <laughs> what sets this shoe why ltd and my favorite part go ahead the upper all 3m number one Number two, you have stripes. You have 3M stripes. Has I didn't it, know any of that has, until I saw your post on Twitter. Has the other Adidas, day. and your subscribers should comment for sure, has Adidas released a shoe that also has 3M stripes along with the full upper? Do you know or are you quizzing? I'm people? quizzing. I don't know. I can't remember one. I don't think so. Not with dual that I can remember, but you know, if, if you guys know, please comment. But I can't. I don't remember one either. Yeah. I I'm can't trying to think one. back to like all the early consortium pairs yeah. and everything too. Like the fifth anniversary was cool because the whole upper was 3M, but you didn't have that on the stripes, right? This puts it over the top. So to me, this is different than anything Adidas has done when it comes to full 3M. This is. I mean, it looks fantastic. The real question, are these going to go under retail like every Ultra Boost we've seen lately, man? Is this a pair that people need to rush out and cop tomorrow or today, depending on when you're watching the vlog? Here's the deal. If you want the shoe, you have a price. You're gonna pay what you wanna pay. And, that, and that's it, to have it. So yeah. for me, paying 200 was tough. I would have loved to pay 180 for this. I would love to pay 140 for this. Uh, will they go under retail? I believe so. But so what gets a guy like you to pay 200 for these knowing that they're probably gonna go under retail? Uh, for me, having them early and being able to show people on my Twitter and, and, and wherever else. So, what the so a little flex, a little light flex. Yeah. You just wanna be able to, yeah. to have them early, a little flex. I guess a little bit, but. Little flex. All right, Lil Flex. That's your rap name, Lil, Lil Flex. Flex. Lil what Flex. up? Check out my homie Lil Flex. He's going to be opening downtown at the Ogden. Yeah, I don't know. I, I like to get information out there, and I like to see it. You no, know. I'm really glad you copped them early. I'm glad. Yeah. I didn't know uh, they were both 3M, the upper and the stripes, until you posted the photo. Oh. Did you know when you got them? No. You didn't know either. And okay. I think some people knew that they were 3M, but how intensely 3M and how they looked, I don't know that everybody knew, but I, I think that was that was a pretty welcomed sight. Overall, man, this is a dope pair for me. Do I think it's a must cop? I don't know about a must cop, but it's definitely a pair I'm gonna go after just because I'm a sucker for white heel cups. Mm -hmm. um, anything from the Woodwoods to the pair that I created, the Zeno Ultra Boost that I put a white heel cup on. I've always just loved white heel cups on Ultra Boost. Even though they get super banged up, they get really dirty. I just love it. This pair is the uh, textured heel cup, just like everything else we've been seeing lately. So hopefully that kind of keeps some of the dirt off there, but nonetheless, it is still gonna get dirty, still gonna get banged up, scratched up, but I can't help myself. Now I'm not gonna be like you. I probably will wait till these go under retail yeah. to cop me a pair. I know a lot of people don't like this and there's gonna be a lot of complaining about this. White outsole. For me, it doesn't bother me that much. But again, I have a huge rotation. A lot of people that complain about this, maybe they don't have a rotation and it bothers them because they wear these every day. I don't know. Anything else on this shoe, man? Anything uh, else we didn't cover? Anything you're you're thinking about? You think these are gonna have about $200 over resale you were telling me earlier? <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> not uh, not at all. I think they're pretty widely available on GOAT and whatnot right now, but you know it's gonna take a, a minute to get those pairs in. So more than likely though, if you wait, um, I would say you're gonna get a better deal than retail. All right, I think that about wraps it up on these joints, man, unless you have anything else uh, other than what we've already talked about. Also, we have these marble NMDs sitting over here, man. If that's something you guys wanna see a review on, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I actually haven't even seen them. I'm curious to take a look at these marble NMDs here in a second, but if that's a review you guys wanna see, let me know. We'll be glad to take a look at them for you. As always, thank you guys for supporting everything I do. I love the shit out of y'all, and I will see you fools tomorrow. My face above the water My feet can't touch the ground Touch the ground And it feels like I can't see the sands on the horizon Every time You were not around We're slowly drifting Drifting away Wave after wave Wave after wave Feels 
like we're drowning Pulling against the stream Pulling against the I wish I could make it easy Oh, easy